Mr. Poroshenko, it's great to have you on CNBC. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to kick off by asking you, um, at the end of last year, you were accused of treason. And at the moment, you're stuck here in Ukraine. Is this politically motivated? Are those charges valid? First of all, I want to thank you for keeping Ukraine very high in the global agenda, because now here in Ukraine, this is the question of the global security, definitely. And uh, your interview helps the world to know better what's really going on, uh, including the uh, politically motivated prosecution, because the whole world uh, the whole Ukraine understand the political motivated nature of that. This is not the first uh, attack uh, which unfortunately done by Zelensky. Uh, the reason for that is very simple because now me and my uh, political party and the all last opinion poll is number one in the country and his 700 people go down. And uh, point number two is that this is not the first uh, investigation he do for the three years, because the, uh, you can imagine that the first accusation for treason was for the phone, my phone conversation with Biden. That was the first. Second was for the uh, signing up Minsk agreement. Third was for the, my uh, order to counterattack uh, Russian troops in the year 2014. Next was for the, my order to Ukrainian Navy for the catch strike. And now the uh, global explanation is this is just a trash. Nothing to explain, nothing to confirm. And we have, this is the very bad demonstration that Ukraine backsliding to the uh, Ukraine, to the Novorossiya Yanukovych time, when it was selective justice, when it was uh, political motivated prosecution, uh, and with that situation, definitely we do not allow simply nobody in Ukraine to transfer Ukraine to the Russia Putin's times or Belarus Lukashenko time because Ukraine so is, is not Russia. This is a fight you think that you're going to be able to win. Yeah, and why it's happening? Because we now definitely need the unity. Unity. Because the whole world demonstrates now the solidarity with Ukraine. Under the leadership of the United States, under the leadership of the President Biden, Secretary Blinken, Victoria Nuland, uh, and leaders of the whole Europe and the whole world, the world is united uh, around Ukraine. But unfortunately, inside Ukraine, the Ukrainian authorities and Zelensky himself ruined the unity, which demotivated. So you're and saying this speaking, undermines Ukraine's yeah, ability to definitely. defend itself? And at the end of the day, this is just a gift to Putin. Yeah. And you know Putin very well. <laughs> I hate the idea to give him any gift. And with this situation, what should I do? First of all, I return to Ukraine. First of all, I recall for unity. And today, first time saying that to any journalist, uh, because this was not uh, for public before, I write down my personal letter to President Zelensky and give, it was two and a half weeks ago, and I give it directly in his hand through the Speaker of our Parliament. And it was called for unity. It was called like uh, uh, during the uh, heat in the desert uh, near the river. We should now be united to give a defeat, to defeat Putin possible attack. Have you gotten a direct response from the president? Unfortunately, no. That's why I'm waiting for almost three weeks, and I make it public. So come on, yeah. this is now high time to demonstrate unity, because Zelensky is just my opponent. Putin is not only my enemy, Ukraine, enemy of Ukraine, but, but the enemy of the whole world. But your world. political opponents, including the president, say you're an oligarch. You're part of the corruption problem in this country. Nobody said that because uh, I'm really proud that under, uh, when I have an honor to be the president of Ukraine, together with our Western partners, we create anti-corruption infrastructure, including the anti-corruption bureau, anti-corruption court, anti-corruption prosecution office, and a lot of the corruption is now on the, uh, in prison. But unfortunately, the main oligarch who is uh, steal uh, money, $10 billion money from Ukraine, and they have a 
very famous uh, investigation cases and court cases in United States. Unfortunately, he is the close partner of the Zelensky, and that's why corruption is under strong umbrella. But now, so it's not you; it's them. But now, but now, we should speak about unity. I hate the idea to the international media to criticize even my opponent because if I recall for unity from them side, I should demonstrate the approach, the same approach for unity from my side, and we definitely do that. So you return to Ukraine, and now you're not allowed to even leave the confines of the city. What does that do in your view to Ukraine's ability to fight Putin? Because Unfortunately, this is just the demonstration that he afraid me, yeah. Mr. Zelensky. Uh, because uh, the only motivation, uh, my motivation to go was to participate, having an invitation on the session of Parliamentary Assembly of Ukraine, NATO, and he said no. Uh, I have a special meeting with some Minister of Foreign Affairs in Brussels from European Union to make it stronger, our uh, coalition, and he said no. And even today, when I plan to deliver the special equipment to the front line, to our troops, uh, which saving the lives of Ukrainian soldiers, he again said no. And the whole world and the whole Ukraine seeing that this is not a reasonable motivation, but uh, uh, this is also the demonstration that I will fight for Ukraine. And I do, do my best the same again? way, no matter what would be my status, no matter how I would be uh, trying to limit my action, uh, I will fight for Ukraine together, shoulder to shoulder with all Ukrainians, and shoulder to shoulder with the whole world. But would you Definitely run again for that. office? Sorry? But would you run again for office? Is uh, that what you plan to do? This is not exactly fight for Ukraine, because uh, we have now uh, more than two years for the presidential election, but definitely I will uh, do my best that the uh, next Ukrainian president would fight for reform, would make Ukraine stronger, to increase the ability of Ukrainian army, Ukrainian economy, Ukrainian energy sector, and to protect Ukraine. And this is extremely important. But just want to remind you that the next year, keep fingers crossed, not uh, before, we have a RADA election, parliamentary election. Yeah. And today, all opinion poll demonstrating that me is a leader and my party is a leader. But could you and be president again? Is that something uh, is that's not, a possibility this, for this you? This is a completely different thing because we have a parliamentary presidential republic. Uh, based on the results of the parliamentary election, which I give you again, very exclusive answer, yes, definitely. I will run in a parliamentary election. And for the presidential election, I have another dream, and I also be absolutely frank with you. I definitely want to be elected as a member of European Parliament. And uh, the right for participation in the election of European Parliament have a right on the European Union membership, m m member states. And I do my best that Ukraine will be member of European Union. That's why it was my initiative to change the Constitution to make it obligatory European and transatlantic integration and with this situation definitely we will win because now when I uh, was elected as a president only 16 percent, one six percent of Ukrainian uh, was support the uh, integration in NATO, membership uh, in NATO and only 32 percent was support uh, the European integration. When I finished my term, 64%, 6-4, was for the NATO integration, and 70% uh, was the for EU integration. And uh, uh, when Isenberg said, that is because of you? Not very much, because of Putin. Do you and believe Putin. that Ukraine will be a member of No NATO? doubt. This is the main purpose of my political activity, because Ukraine is a European nation. Ukraine is a member of European uh, family and uh, Ukraine historically is a European and during the whole 30 years of our independence we demonstrate completely big difference with Russia, with Belarus, with Kazakhstan and you know that the same as, as we are, that we are different people. Have you been disappointed by Germany's reaction? Uh, <laughs> Look, I tell you the story. Uh, in the year 2014 when I have no army empty treasury and sanction against Ukraine introduction introduced with the Yanukovych time prohibited to supply to us not only weapon but dual purpose. 
and I need urgently the engine for my trucks and for my uh, own personal carrier. And we tried to buy it in Germany with the Deutz company. And when my government asked the German government for the license, it was refused in the year 2014. And we needed like an air. I called to uh, Chancellor Merkel. And uh, we have a meeting in the uh, next uh, week. And he said, we prepared it. So the answer, in a three months time, I have a signature of German government with a license for supplying us the dual purpose and some protection uh, means. That is the way how we should work with Germany. Not making blah, 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 but doing that. Because I, all the time I'm a positive, I'm optimist. And uh, I'm absolutely confident that uh, Germany, as a European leader, can demonstrate their leadership. The German leaders can demonstrate their leadership. And the German leader can demonstrate the unity so unity. the Zelensky people are getting it completely wrong in dealing with Germany, in your view? This is your set, but I said you are absolutely right. What about the United States' response? Because it seemed to be slow in getting started. We've been having these conversations since back in October, November. And then the Biden team, seemingly, over the last couple of weeks, really upping the ante. I can tell you how I see it from Ukraine. And definitely, I very uh, attentively followed all the direction. So, because that troop uh, buildup on uh, Ukraine's borders has been happening for definitely. months. But Ukraine in the year 2021 or 2022 is completely different Ukraine from the year 2014. We have a strong army, and I'm proud of that it is me and my team to create new Ukrainian army, new Ukrainian economy, because we have a 48 uh, uh, months of the economic growth, not having nothing of that in now. But... Uh, first reaction, October. First publication, Washington Post, Politica, that Russia collecting uh, significant power, not only troops, but uh, most modern uh, weapons in our border. Zero reaction from Ukrainian authorities. And then November, December, new satellite uh, pictures, new uh, intelligence data, uh, the statement that uh, U.S. rising up temperature, and we don't see this danger. And so you're saying long, the make West, it, it wasn't the West missing it, ma- it was yeah. the government making missing the problem. Making long story short, I am really admired with the leadership of President Biden. I know him extremely well. I am extremely, uh, really by the United States government, including the Secretary Blinken, uh, the uh, uh, Victoria Nuland, and many others. And after, he is not only make a personal and American statement, but he make a unique coordination of the whole European nation. And now, instead of the statement, as we have in the year 2014, instead of concern, which is demonstrating the uh, countries and international organization, now we have an absolutely practical uh, weapon supply, defensive weapon supply. We have an absolutely practical training exercises, and what. I need the most now. Next step, in the middle of this year, please, please, we need to have a membership action plan for NATO on the NATO summit because that would be exactly the right answer to the Putin policy of blackmailing Ukraine, blackmailing the world, and blackmailing the United States. And Putin understands only strength. And if the Western world can demonstrate this strength, never again Putin will work with the Western, uh, with the Western world by, uh, by uh, uh, language of ultimatum. And with this thing, when you, if you ask me what Ukraine need now the most, point number one, Ukraine need to weaken Russia. How we can do that? By sanction, by membership action plan, by uh, the economic measures who can reduce the Russian ability to increase the, their military potential. Does that what, mean shutting down Nord Stream 2? Uh, exactly. This is the, uh, to make you, uh, Russia weaker, that would be new sanction of the Nord Stream 2. Because Nord Stream 2 is not economic, not energy, 
This is completely security uh, project who can undermine the Western unity, and who can attack Ukraine, Poland, and many, many other things. And this is, again, uh, this is make, Ukraine, make Russia weaker. Point number two, make Ukraine stronger. To supply the weapons, to supply the, to motivate the economic growth, and to increase the price Russia will pay if Putin make an absolutely crazy decision to continue the large-scale operation against Ukraine. And with this situation, definitely strongest Ukraine increase the price, and this is the shortest way to peace. And the third, and the uh, last, is uh, to increase Ukrainian resilience. We need to provide local inside unity, local reform, continue reform which was launched by uh, my uh, team, uh, reform of security sector, economic reform, judicial reform, and to make Ukraine more understandable and more predictable for the Western world, including, as you absolutely rightly said, the strong fight against corruption. Because the fact that Ukraine cannot appoint after me, the next special anti-corruption prosecutor and office leader for one year, despite of the promises of Zelensky to everybody, starting from Biden and finishing with the uh, President of the European Commission, European Council. This is absolutely, absolutely not acceptable. You understand, Vladimir Putin, when you think about what the United States has pledged, 3,000 additional troops to Eastern Europe, to NATO allies, we're talking about Poland, Romania, Germany. Doesn't this play into his narrative that NATO is surrounding his territorial integrity and undermining Russia? First of all. Because those troops aren't sent to you guys. Those troops are sent to NATO allies. Nobody believe in that. And they're and not going to exactly upset the balance of power yeah, in Europe. Yeah. And the most important thing, Putin definitely not believe in that. You have your own experience to communicate with Putin, and you can confirm it, by the way, by congratulation with an absolutely brilliant interview. Uh, but let's discuss on that. I, have a, I also have a long experience in communication with Putin. Not an easy talk is being the president of the country in a state of war. And I have a three lesson. You may be confirm, con, uh, confirm or be opposed. Lesson number one, please, don't trust Putin. Nothing he promised to me, no any guarantees he gave to me, no any guarantees he gave to the normative format is executed. First, don't trust Putin. Second, don't be afraid of Putin. You don't look like you're afraid of him, and that was great success. Don't be afraid of Putin, because this is the only way how you can reach the results. And third, keep the unity of the Western world. Because the purpose of Putin to find out the uh, weakest point and to ruin the unity. Keep the unity. In, in the question of uh, granting us the membership action plan on NATO, in the question for supply Ukraine, defensive weapon. None of these weapons allow us to attack Russia. This is just to protect our soil. We don't need NATO soldiers, American soldiers on our soil. We, I am proud that we create uh, more than half a million of Ukrainian heroes who are ready to protect, but we should, to protect Ukrainian soil, but we should give them the state-of-the-art weapons just to increase the price if Putin be more crazy and continue this uh, election. So, and don't trust, the civilian don't defense. be afraid, and unity, including the civilian defense. And now I um, can tell you that since the year 2015, I created all the structures, and every single city, town, street, or house would be the hell for the Russian troops if they make an absolutely disastrous decision to attack Ukraine. Do you believe that he's going to invade? So, Do you believe he's going to invade? Uh, Excuse me, do you believe that in uh, December year 2013 that Putin invaded in Crimea? Do you believe that he will invade in Donbass? My answer would be, I don't know. Because, do you know why? Because Putin don't know if he will invade or not. And he make a decision in the very last moment and that would be strongly dependent if Ukraine would be strong, if solidarity with Ukraine would be strong, if the price would be high rocketing. It 
would be no invasion. That's why the supply to defense and, uh, of uh, uh, Ukraine is the shortest way to peace. And another lesson, Putin go as far as we allow them to go. Our solidarity, our strength, our strong response. And the last response of the uh, United States to NATO is the very right answer. We are not standing on the position that Putin will decide if NATO should uh, uh, receive new members or not. We don't allow Russia to decide if sovereign and independent states wants to go to NATO and Putin make a permission to go or not. This is not Putin's choice. And point number three, this is not possible to change the border after the World War II by force. And with this situation, we are not allowed. And you see, when Putin thinks that we are weak, Putin transfer the, uh, the approach. If under my term it was no uh, Ukraine in NATO prohibited us to have negotiation, we ignore that. After me, he said, no NATO in Ukraine uh, try to block all the military exercises, all the supply of the weapons, all joint training, all joint commission, all reformation of Ukrainian security sector in the NATO standard. But now he is go farther. He said, no NATO not only in Ukraine, but in the Central and Eastern Europe. No in Bulgaria, no in Romania. And this is just a confirmation of uh, my uh, conclusion. And Putin rising up the stakes. And our strong and united position, if we will be strong, he will stop and go back without the war. This is the shortest way to peace. Please, let's do that. And with this situation, my second appeal, please, no concession. Putin. This is the way to the nightmare. Let me take you back several decades. George H.W. Bush had a Secretary of State, James Baker, hmm. and in, during the negotiations following the fall of hmm. the Soviet Union, it was suggested that Russia hmm. potentially become part of NATO. Hmm. That would be the way to secure against any further aggression in that Soviet Cold War era. Hmm. Do you think that that is a missed opportunity, perhaps? Answer, no. You have a great knowledge of history. Can I give you a surprise? Not for you, you probably know, but also for the viewers of CNBC. Do you know when was the first application of Ukraine in NATO? Surprise, 1954. 19. 54. Three countries, Soviet Union, Ukraine and Soviet Social Republic, and Belarusian Social so Republic make an application form to NATO. Do you know what was the precondition for this application form? Very interesting. Soviet Union proposed a list of the guarantees of the European security. Do you, it not remind you something? And do you know what was in this list of the guarantees for European security? Neutral status of the Western Germany. Guarantee that Western Germany never be the NATO member. Surprise. But Putin do absolutely the same that Soviet Union 70 years ago. And I think that was very wise decision of then leaders of the Western world to give it seems to me in the year 1955, uh, the membership in NATO for the Western Germany. And that's why they keep Western Germany booming, not only security, but uh, economy and everything. Now is absolutely the same situation. Please, Western leaders, our American partners, learn very attentively experience of 1954 and act the same. That's why. If, uh, uh, can Russia theoretically be the member of NATO? Definitely, yes. Can Russia be a member of NATO under Putin? You know better than me. <laughs> Before I let you go, I have to ask you about the economy. What's happening in Ukraine today? You've got inflation above 10%. Um, the currency right now has lost around 6% of its value. 10. Are you worried about the economy today? Definitely. The most important thing is not uh, uh, fact, because fact is just a photo. 
but analyzes the trend and the reason. And during the very famous uh, conference with the Western media of Mr. Zelensky, frankly speaking, I was shocked because they said that in all problem of Ukrainian economy, he blamed our Western partners. <laughs> he said that this is <laughs> the reason that was uh, uh, our Western partners deliver uh, the information for panic, fake information. Come on. We have a two reason. Reason number one, absolutely populism, incompetence, and chaotic movement and corruption of the Zelensky authorities uh, during the last three years, which definitely bring to that. And second reason, or maybe first reason, the responsible person for that, for uh, organizing the danger for investing in Ukrainian economy is Mr. Putin. And the position of our Western partners is completely opposite. But I mean, the, investors the, uh, are going to be fearful uh, that would be if you're talking about imminent invasion. Me, I know much better than anybody what is the way of thinking for the investors. And immediately when the Western and united Ukrainian uh, approach will demonstrate that we do not accept any Putin ultimatum, all investors would be back. The, what we, what will we, that happen under this government? In uh, uh, I, that depends, however, what governing, government would be ready to, uh, to introduce. But uh, definitely, Ukraine, investor would be back. And definitely now we should create not only messages, but step. What step are we talking about? Rule of law, independent courts, effective anti-corruption steps, uh, and uh, investment attractability. Not video uh, blah, 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 but uh, very well calculated, very right messages. And Ukraine is an absolutely nice nation and nice country for the investment, but not with a very stupid, very uh, ineffective uh, populistic reform with the danger of Putin. Do you think you're going to get a fair trial in Ukraine? Do you think you're going to get a fair trial in Ukraine? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but I definitely know that I will win because Ukrainian people is with me, because the whole world understands that this is trash, and this is the catastrophe for Zelensky and for uh, his team, uh, the, because he cannot explain even in one single word why he doing that, and the whole world and the whole Ukraine understanding that this is the political motivated prosecution, and this is the way to nowhere, this is the way to Yanukovych. Yanukovych finished in Rostov, fled in with the Moscow, to Moscow, and nobody would be happy to be in his shoes. Mr. Poroshenko, thank you for joining CNBC.